again, fellow do-it-yourselfers. We are back with another Christmas surprise, another new video for this week. Recognize this, that is the same exact Ford Explorer from the very last video where we had the very interesting and unique experience with the ABS sensor diagnosis and repair. In that video, you may remember I mentioned I have a laundry list of things that I have to do on this truck, which is owned by a very good friend of mine that I'm doing these repairs for him. And uh, one of the issues he has is the odometer display does not work. This has a digital odometer, and he states that the screen is just blank. So this is actually something I'm very familiar with, and actually we have two, I think two related videos, because this seems to be a common issue with uh, Fords of this era around 2002, where they have these types of issues on the dashboard. And um, I think in the previous videos, it was the speedometer or maybe the tachometer that wasn't working, I don't remember. But I'm pretty familiar with uh, this odometer issue specifically. Almost always it's caused by a failed solder joint, and if you just resolder it, then you can get it to function again. So that's what we're going to hope is the issue. And I'm, I'm very confident that's what it is. So we're just gonna go right to that. And if it isn't, we'll have to diagnose it. So um, taking apart the dash on this is actually really easy. It, it's um, as anything else, that's pretty basic. Any monkey can unscrew some bolts. But we'll go ahead and just very quickly walk through the process, uh, assuming that this is probably a repair you would be doing on your own truck if you're watching this video. But in general, I don't really show bolt by bolt because you can look at it and you can figure it out, which is kind of what we're gonna do here. So let's take a look at what the issue is. All right, looking at the dashboard lights here, underneath the battery light would normally be the odometer display and that digital display is not working, so that is our issue. That means we have to get this instrument cluster out of the vehicle, so that will be our next step. Oh man, I could watch these bolt by bolt videos all day. Yeah, well, not me, because I'm not like that at all. Um, that is about the most boring thing, watching a guy unscrew bolts all day. So uh, generally what I do for these is I just kind of take a more pragmatic approach and rather than watching a step-by-step -step or looking up instructions, you can just kind of look at this. And granted, I, I have done this before, so there is some familiarity. But the thing is, when you look at it, you can see that this is done in layers. And the, the thing is, is that you've got screws that are hidden between the other panel, and that panel has screws hidden between the other panel. So the idea is you've just got to take the panels off in sequence to reveal the hidden screws. There's also, I see a couple of hidden screws way up here over the instrument panel. It looks like there's two of them. And you just kind of look at it and you figure it out. And wherever there are not any screws, um, once you remove panels, those are just going to be held in by clips. So really, you, you kind of can't go too wrong with this. I mean, for example, I, I can see here this air vent has no screws in it, but I'm assuming that there's got to be something holding it in. So it's either going to be clips holding it in and or more likely some screws underneath this panel which this panel, I don't see any screws because they like to keep that nice trim appearance. So this probably also has some screws underneath this panel. And if you're not sure, you can just be very, very careful. And we're just gonna pop this loose here and just see what's holding it in. And, and that's, as, that's as far as it goes right there. So it pops loose because there's a clip right here. There's two of them I can see, but then here, it's, it's definitely stuck. So that's telling me that there are some screws under there. So you, just, you can just figure this out. This is really not rocket science. So um, that means if the screws are, are under here, this lower panel has to go. So we're going to get a socket set and I'm um, gonna look under here. There's a bolt here and a bolt there. It looks like just two bolts. I figured it out all by myself. Okay, looking at this very closely, I can tell you it is very clear this is the outermost panel. There are no more bolts or screws holding it in, so I feel comfortable yanking this out now because the only way it can possibly be held in is with clips. 
All right, and now that I do that, I can easily see that this panel here has a screw holding it in, two screws holding it in, and there's a third one here on the right side of the steering wheel, and that is clearly all that is holding this second layer in. So I'm going to remove those. So one of the reasons I hate doing bolt-by-bolt -bolt videos is because uh, you get a lot less comments when you do things like um, an electrical analysis or uh, analyzing fuel trims with the uh, engine under a load curve. Um, your armchair experts generally don't comment on your technique on that, but it is amazing how good a lot of people apparently are at turning bolts, so much better than I am, because you get so much more armchair experts on bolt turning videos than you do on things that actually require some skill. Uh, and uh, actually, for example, a lot of people are going to be, hey, you're draining the battery, you, you moron. Yep, all right, I just forgot the keys were in there. But uh, once I remove this, we should have some pretty good progress because that will remove the middle layer. There we go. And then uh, while I'm at it, we're going to get these screws out from this cover here. Okay, it looks like this is going to come off in one piece here. And um, one of the problems is this is not coming out. And it's jammed up behind the radio here. So what does that tell you? That tells you that uh, there is going to be another hidden screw behind the radio panel. Wow, I figured that all by myself. So we'll have to pry off the decorative trim for the radio paddle, it looks like, and hopefully the screw will just be readily available right there without having to remove anything else. So you don't even have to really do this in order, but uh, I'm looking at the radio panel here. The radio panel is very obviously an outermost cover here. There is nothing else to remove to get to it, so it can only be held in by clips. There is no other possible way, so we're going to gently pry this out. Okay, and uh, obviously on a lot of models you would have to remove the dials on here. I actually forgot about that, but it turns out those come with the cover anyway, so we're fine. We could undo this electrical connector, but there's no need to because I can access everything I need um, back here. And should be a screw holding this in somewhere. And actually there isn't, it's just a clip, but I wouldn't have been able to remove it because it was behind the trim piece. So that means we've got our cover out of the way here. We'll have to just lower the steering wheel now to make room to pull it out. Oh no, it still won't come out, oh no. All right, well, probably because of these electrical connectors, I'm guessing. So let's undo the electrical connectors, since that's what's holding this in at this point. All right, this connector is stubborn, so we're gonna have to try to pry him out. Like that, there we go, now it's freed up. All right, there is plenty of clearance to get this instrument panel out now, and we're gonna look and see what's holding it in. And using my degree in molecular biology, um, I am able to ascertain there are two screws holding it in, one here and one exactly opposite on the right. And that's it, other than that, it just sits on some alignment pegs. So let's remove those screws. All right, there's the screws, so, and now it still won't come out, oh no. And that's because if you look closely, you just have to push down on the tabs, it looks like, there it goes. There goes my light too. And uh, what I wanna do is before I take this out, we're gonna take a peek behind it because obviously there's gonna be some electrical connectors on here and I wanna make sure I pay attention to where those go. All right, there's one at the bottom right here. There it goes, and I'm going to kind of rest him up so the ones up here will be for the instrument panel and the ones down here 
go to those uh, light controls and other things from the panels. Um, there is another electrical connector back here. Okay, and I will admit this, this is new. I have not seen this before, but uh, there is a cable running up in here. And what that obviously is, is the shift indicator. Um, so I guess prior times that I've done this, it's been a um, floor console shift lever. This one has the steering wheel mounted shift lever. So the indicator is up here. So, um, all right, so there's a little white tab here, but it's locked in by some plastic connectors that if I were to pry those apart, right here and here it would come out, but it's very obvious I would break those connectors. So that's not going to be the way to remove this. Um, there is a tab here and here. So I believe that's how I would remove it. Yeah, that's definitely how you remove it. Now, are there any screws in here? And I don't see any, so I'm gonna just take a guess. Uh, let's see if I can get my light to stay. Yeah, I'm gonna take a guess that these tabs that lock in, there it goes. It looks like you just remove that whole assembly like that. All right, we figured it out. And I don't think there's anything else holding this in. There is not, we got it. Man, I would have had that out in only five minutes if I was doing it. Yes, I am sure you would have. And then I always ask them to show me a video of it and they refer me to someone else's video on YouTube. Um, let's see, I believe, looks like we got a couple of screws here that um, I don't think we need to access from there. I believe we need to access it from the back. But if I'm wrong about that, um, it's not the end of the world. We'll just remember it all the better for next time. All right, we need a really small socket or a Torx bit. Let's try that one. That one works. Oh man, I, I just realized out of habit um, of always doing my videos like this that I've been skipping over the most exciting parts and that is unscrewing these bolts. Other channels have years of this that you can watch. And I do not until now. All right, um, looks like this is held on by some really, really, I don't even know if I have anything that small. Um, or this, this may be all we need. This I believe is actually as far as we need to go. So if we look here, that's obviously where our odometer readout would be. So if we flip it over, it corresponds over to this side here. So it looks like one of these solder connections around here would be our issue. So I do not have that good of eyesight. I need a magnifying glass. All right, so my problem is I don't see any failures here. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, labels here like C26, C43, C24. So I could pull up a wire diagram, see which one of these might be my uh, power for this. So I could focus a little more on that one, but I don't see an issue. So the other possibility is it could be on the other side of the circuit board. So I think it'll be quicker if I just check that. So that'll be those little tiny screws. And I don't, oh, that does work right there. Cool. I wouldn't want to cheat you of missing out on this incredible action here. We're going to do all four of these in real time. And then maybe I'll get a million viewers. Okay, it's resisting me a little bit. So I'm going to thoroughly check. And it is very obvious to me that um, there is nothing else holding this in except for these alignment dowels. So I'm taking this out because there's no reason it shouldn't come out. There we go. Okay, we got something connecting it still here. 
Uh, we got one of these band connectors. These are these are a pain to reconnect. Um, so we could we might have to disconnect this. Let's see. Um, well, we can actually very easily disconnect it by opening these black clips, but it does look like there's enough room. Oh, look here, it's burned right there. That's not um, where our odometer readout is, though. So our odometer readout, although that's that's almost certainly our issue. Obviously, it doesn't have to be in the same location. Odometer is there. So I would expect to be some of these pins here that produce the odometer readout. But um, let's go ahead and examine that since that was my first inclination. And it goes to these components here where everything looks pretty stable. Resistors, capacitors, everything are what all those solder connections are to. And actually, it looks like those are some. Um, I'm not an electronics person, but, but these don't look like solder points. These look like they are um, some type of um, chips or resistors or something. But that, that is definitely, that is definitely an issue for sure. I wonder if we have to um, replace those resistors. So I don't know if those resistors are working. Um, it says 60 ohm and um, what does that say? Let's test those resistors real quick. See if we have to replace those. No, it is 60 ohm. It is uh, just a little bit hard to read. So let's just make sure. Okay, well, I, I can't read them because it's all faded and scratched out, but I'm going to see if these all read the same. And if they do, then I'm going to assume they're okay. And it looks like they read the same. That one's a little lower, but that one's different. Yeah, the bottom two read the same, the top two read the same. Um, but I do believe that they're different. I'm not totally sure about that because I can't read them. But let's examine our solder. Okay. Oh, we're missing one here. Yeah, right there. It looks like that's not making connection. Yep, right there. Right there. Look on the other side here. There it is right there. Let me um, see if I can get the camera on there. My camera gets a little blurry when I focus in too much there. But uh, if you look at this pin right here, right where my finger is, maybe you can see that that's loose in there. It's not making contact. So I think if we resolder that, um, that's going to be okay. So uh, you notice, by the way, in the comments, I'm not going to get a lot of criticism on my electrical testing method, but you're going to get a lot of them on how I turn bolts. That is why I usually just do this stuff in my videos. That is definitely loose in there. You know what this other one is too. Ch check out this pin right here. Now hopefully that's showing up in the camera right there where my finger is is not connected either. I could probably pull each end of those respective resistors. Is that the two different resistors? Yeah. So it corresponds to this terminal and this terminal of two different resistors, uh, which seem to be functional. I believe that those are the correct ohms because they're both reading the same. Um, so I'm going to resolder both of those pins. And now I'm kind of thinking I may want to resolder all of these resistor terminals. Let's just test these other ones. The other two are strong. I'm not worried about those. But these top two resistors are not working. They're not making any connection. So let me get a solder kit. All right, so the way I like to do this is to um, try to heat up the, the pin, the terminal, rather than try to melt the solder over it. Just get the terminal hot. And then when I touch the solder, kind of have the terminal melt it so it sort of draws it in. It takes a while to heat it up. And that's kind of how I do it. Not that I do this a lot, by the way. There, like that. Now it's starting to melt the solder. All 
like that. And that um, is a much stronger connection. Now the pin's not wobbling at all. So uh, do this one next to it here. This one's a little easier because the pin's taller. And this method does take a while because you got to heat up the pin first. It doesn't melt uh, the solder as quickly as if you just touch it to the iron. But this, I believe, kind of draws in the solder like that a little better. And that's a good one there. Kind of clean it up a little. Yeah, that'll work. And let's let it cool for a second. Wiggle our pin. It no longer wiggles. That is a stable connection. Well, I don't know what he was doing with that electrical gizmo and stuff, but I can tell you I would have turned those bolts a lot better. All right, I almost forgot. We gotta, we have to show the bolts. This is where it's at, man. I, I honestly don't get it. I honestly don't see how he can watch this. I feel like I've got to entertain during this time. But uh, if you wanted the quick way out of this, you could just uh, know that the installation is obviously the reverse of the removal, so you can just play the video backwards, which is a good thing. When I was a little kid in school, I remember that was a huge deal. They would sometimes play an educational video and invariably a kid would yell out at the end of the video, hey, can we watch it backwards? And oh, if the teacher played it backwards, it was a big deal. I don't know if you guys still even do that if you're younger than me, if you watch videos in school anymore. But uh, sometimes when you watch the video backwards, it changes the whole context of the movie. I was watching The Wizard of Oz recently because of the holiday here. And um, I realized when you watch it backwards, it's a whole different movie. It's about a little girl in an odd land who basically kills a tin man, hangs a scarecrow, and scares the piss out of a lion in order to uh, get to the end of a road where a tornado brings her back home. Totally different story, and actually even better. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm just going to connect the two main harnesses into this thing. I'm not going to worry about that gear shift indicator yet. Just want to make sure that the repair works before I go too far into this. So turn the key on here. And up, ah, there it is. It works. Okay, we can see right there, and let's uh, make sure we go through 182,000 miles, is that right? Wow. Alrighty, repair complete. Alrighty, that is a good feeling when you do stuff like that, and I even did it without my hat on, I noticed. So uh, again, got thrown a couple of curves on this one, but again, just sticking with basics and, and simple aptitude and um, just double checking using the digital volt ohm meter to measure the resistors and make sure before we just follow instructions from a YouTube video or something, um, you know, don't do that. Make sure that you're testing everything because you're going to run into this kind of thing where it's different than the video is going to be. So you have to understand the basics. You've got to understand how to do that testing. And because um, it's, it's almost never just rote following a diagram or flow chart. So uh, anyway, you guys know that if you're regular subscribers to the channel and especially those of you guys on my page channel, all of you guys together though, uh, all 200 plus thousand of you, can you believe that? 200 plus thousand. So I want to take this quick opportunity to thank all of you subscribers for your support and for liking the videos and your comments, especially the comments are, are excellent sources of material because many of you guys I know are more knowledgeable than I am about a lot of these things. So I, I just wanted to say thanks for making this one of the more successful diagnostics communities, I believe it is, on YouTube with um, a lot less fluff and just a lot less uh, using, um, uh, what is that stuff called? See, we don't even use it on the channel, but I know you guys what I'm talking about. Seafoam, that stuff you just, oh, just pour seafoam in the engine. Um, you know, I tried to create a community where we stayed away from the BS for the most part. And it looks like it's been pretty successful, quite honestly. So um, you guys are a big responsibility in that, and I realize that. So I wanted to wish you guys very happy holiday, let you know how much I appreciate 
when you like the videos, when you comment, when you subscribe. It really helps support the channel and what we're trying to do here, and you guys are a big part of that. And I just want to recognize uh, all of you guys for what you've done over the past um, seven years, I guess, six or seven years that I've been doing this and helping it to grow into what it is today. I can't believe 200,000 subscribers. Quite honestly, um, my goal was 50,000 subscribers when I started because I honestly didn't think there would be that many people interested in a diagnostics-focused channel. That, as, as we've commented on this video, um, all the popular channels are just turning bolts and replacing parts, which anybody can do. That's why people always do that, is because they, they can turn bolts. You don't need skill for that. Um, but to, to even fathom that 200,000 people would subscribe to a channel with this type of content, I got to hand it to you guys um, that you want to continue your learning pattern. And it's just good to know there's a lot of you guys out there that have that mindset that I do of trying to continually improve, stay up to date with the technologies, and not just sit on our laurels and talk about how great we are at fixing cars when we wouldn't even have a clue on how to diagnose some new technology like direct fuel injection or something, which we need to do, by the way. So I just want to recognize that I um, appreciate that you guys have that mindset, and that's why I try to deliver the type of content that we do on this channel. So uh, you're not going to see me change brakes on the channel very much, but uh, you are going to see me diagnose an ABS system. And um, I just love that there's that many people out there that are into that like I am. So it's a great hobby. It really is. It's a great hobby. I do not do it professionally, but I can tell you, I can make some pretty good money on this. And uh, I know a lot of you guys have told me that you have been able to make money off of what you've learned on this channel. Many of you guys have stated that you've passed your ASE exams or, or um, helped get through your technical school as a result of this. As a matter of fact, there are a couple of technical schools that actually use some of the videos, especially the fuel trim videos, as part of their curriculum. Um, so, um, wow, it's come a long way, and, and I just want to thank you guys for that input to help make that happen. All right, happy holidays, guys. We'll be back with a new video on this channel soon. And also, I have not forgotten you guys on the pay channel. I am just waiting for a car where I can safely do some ignition testing without blowing up my scope. And uh, you'll see what that means when I finally get that video going. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Take care.